Hello, hello, I'm Josh Ramsey, and I am a singer and songwriter for a living. When I went to rehab, which by the way I don't recommend to anybody because there's really nothing romantic about not being able to walk and being awake for two weeks. They make you do this thing where you have to, uh, you, you, you draw like a circle that represents you and then you draw all these other circles that are all the drugs you've ever done. And you write and you draw a circle of how big each one is for how important it is to you. And then you do a second drawing where you do you and then all sort of the things in your life that are important, how important they are. And then you put them over top of each other and most addicts, the drugs are the bigger drawing. With my music was bigger than um, heroin was. I sort of at that moment realized that I couldn't do both. I just couldn't do both. And I felt like there was other stuff that I wanted to do. There's a finite amount of time that you have to get what you need done, done. And I was like, you know, this is my moment to do it. So if, if I'm gonna do it, now's the time. Born to be? I don't know. I'm still, I'm still trying to figure it out. My whole family are singers, um, and my parents' parents were all singers too, actually. So I sort of came from like a long line of them, I guess. So it's sort of like our family business, I suppose. Here's a good example. This is kind of strange, but like you know, when you go on those family road trips when you're a kid, and like you know, your parents have you play I Spy or whatever. Um, my parents would, you know, my dad would sing a note, my mom would sing a note, and then they would get me to sing a note, and my sister would sing a note, and they would spell out these complex jazz chords, and I would learn what they were called. Um, so that was like our, our road trip game when I was like four and five and stuff. It was like, this is what a major seven is, and this is what a minor seven is, and all like that kind of stuff. My mom was like a, is still a singing teacher, and she would have all these, um, all these sort of like famous people in our house taking lessons from her. I remember being a kid and like the, like Brian from ACDC was there working on vocals with her because he was tasting blood when he was singing or something ridiculous like that. And then my dad, uh, him and his two friends owned this, this big recording studio. So if I went to work with my dad, it would be like Aerosmith was there or whatever. So I guess to me, the way that influenced me was I, I it seemed so realistic to be a musician because that's like all I knew. You know, when everyone else was like, I want to grow up and be a fire truck or whatever it is that they want. I was like, I guess I'm going to be a singer because that's what everybody does. In the earlier years, we had sort of like a rotating lineup of, of a bunch of people for a while. My sister originally was in the band. Um, and, uh, you know, slowly people replaced each other until it was Mariana's Trench. But we went through a bunch of names and stuff. You know, the first tour I ever went on, we actually changed the band name every night, which is ridiculous because really, like, the only point of going on a tour, especially when no one knows who you are, is to try and gain some fans. And you really can't do that if you change the band name every show. But I remember the first feeling when I was like, wow, something's actually happening. We played this little show in Vancouver and the record wasn't out yet, but there was a single out, and the local Vancouver radio station, uh, the Fox, with the rock station there, uh, they were playing it, because they were, they're were they good about supporting local acts and stuff, so they were playing Say Anything, and I remember us going up on stage, and it was the first time we had played on stage, and I could see people in the audience that I didn't know who were singing the song. Um, they didn't know the rest of the songs, but they knew the one. And I remember being like, wow, that's... That's pretty cool. And I actually remember Mike turning to me and being like, we should appreciate this now because you only get this once. And that, that was pretty cool. Our first like full-length album was called Fix Me, uh, which came out in 2006. The reason it was called Fix Me um, was because there was a song on the record that was going to be called that was called Fix Me, and it got cut. Ironically, that was the song that actually got assigned um, and got all the labels interested in us. And then it got cut because basically what happened was I wrote that song, and then some people from our label said we need some more songs like that. I won't say anything, but so I wrote a second song that followed the same sort of formula that was called Say Anything, and everyone thought that one was better, so we, they didn't want to have both on there. So we decided to just keep the title in there so that it was at least, you know, a little something of the thing that got us where we were, but uh, the song never, <laughs> never made it. Else, 
On our first record, what I was after was just energy and raw and just excited, you know? I don't listen to that record. I don't listen to any of our records. I've heard them enough. But if, if I were to listen to it, I, I would assume that I would feel like it was a race to the end, you know? It was like we were all just going, 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 and it was just like as full energy all the time. And you know, when you do your first record, it's not like you've written it to be an album. At that point, you take the best songs you've ever written for your, your life, and you take 12 of the 12 best and you put them on there. So it doesn't necessarily make it a cohesive album. You know, when you're learning and you go like, oh wow, this is a cool trick if I do this, you know, one trick in the chorus here. Um, yeah, I'll try it again, I'll try it again. So you, you, you kind of have a few of the same ideas showing up in a few different songs and stuff. So I feel like that record to me, um, it'll always be important to me because it was the first, um, but it's the least, uh, it's the least evolved thing that we did, I think. Well, Josh is out there working his ass off. We're sitting uh, in, and Mike hey. and myself, we're sitting around by the heater. <laughs> it's nice and warm. Mm, toasty. A lot of problems with the first album <clears throat> because it had rock sounds on it but the songs that I wrote were melodically more pop so radio stations wouldn't play it because it was like rock radio said it was too pop and pop radio said it was too rock and we sat right on the fence and no one would play it. So. The only people that did play it was Much Music, thank God, because that's what actually broke the band. I can't hear a lady song. Oh my God. 